it was a requested video that I thought initially was impossible to do, but the more I thought about it, the more I did a little bit of research, I realized this is a really exciting video for me to share with you. It is how to stay on a $150 budget for the entire month on vegan food alone. So let's get into it. Now when I was coming up with these tips, it was really important for me to kind of figure out what would be the best kind of vegan diet to be on in order to make the money last the longest through the month. So as I got to thinking about everything, I realized the best way to do this to really stretch your dollar throughout the entire month is to do more of a starch-based approach to a vegan diet. So that doesn't mean that you won't have any vegetables or fruits that are fresh in there, you absolutely will, but you wanna make sure that you're focusing on foods that have a long shelf life and that you can buy in bulk for a lot cheaper. This is really going to stretch it the most. I, of course, will recommend Costco, Sam's Club, any of those bulk kind of stores. You're gonna save a lot of money there. Um, I also shop at Natural Grocers and Trader Joe's, um, but I also know that that is not for everybody everywhere. So you're definitely gonna have to do your research. You're gonna have to look for deals online. You're gonna have to look for maybe coupons um, in the newspaper or online and definitely do your research. But where I am at, these are the best ways to be able to do this budget, but of course, Tailor it to your own location and uh, do your best. I think when you have such a small budget for the entire month, it's easy to be like, oh, well, we don't have those stores where I live or this is impossible for me. Anything is possible. You just have to do your research and you have to be willing to do a little bit of work to make it happen. So it goes without saying that if you're going to spend $150 on food a month, this does not include going out to restaurants, going to the coffee shop, this is just going to the grocery stores, finding those bulk areas where you can save some money, and whatever you can make on your own, make on your own. If you have access to any kind of garden where you can go and pick your own vegetables and fruits, that is going to save you some money, or if you have your own garden. Growing your own herbs in your kitchen is another way to save some money, so just keep all of these things in mind and uh, do your very best. You're going to be able to save on produce by buying fruits and vegetables that are in season and local. If you have access to a farmer's market, go at the end of the day um, when people are just really trying to get rid of what they brought to the farmer's market to sell. You can get probably a better discount at the end of the day than you would in the rush of the day or early in the morning. Also, you can go to just the produce section of any grocery store and ask if they have any deals on either ugly fruits and vegetables that they don't want to display or things that are almost overripe. Um, at Natural Grocers, which is where I buy most of my fresh produce, um, besides buying it at Costco, they have a section that is a $2 kind of bin and they will put things out periodically that are um, either just ugly or overripe, um, but still totally edible. It's all organic and I constantly am buying $2 bags. These um, quick sale produce for $2, we have a ton of on the vine tomatoes as well as some large looking like portobello mushrooms. All of these for $2, that's really cheap. And like I said, you can just kind of uh, freeze them yeah. if they're just too overripe. They work great for smoothies and for banana and ice cream. And even in Costco, mm -hmm. just six it's of them great. was like two bucks. Yeah, yeah, so, so this is like that's one, two, six dollars more. That's like almost, that's three bunches. Mm -hmm. And then we've got cucumbers in this one and limes and lemons. I mean, all of this organic would cost so much. Um, those and lot ones, yeah. Tons of jalapenos and lots of different peppers, and these last a really long time. We got a $2 three bag of this like three weeks ago, and we still have two <laughs> jalapenos left. And then all of these vines. So such a great way to save money. I just wanted to share with you guys. If you have a natural grocers, ask them, but also just go talk to a person who works in the produce section and see if they will give, give you some kind of discount for overripe things. Make sure that when you go to the grocery store, you bring a list and you do not deviate from that list. It is very important that you grocery shop when you're not hungry because you're just going to end up buying things that you don't actually need or you're gonna go over budget because you're like, oh, this looks good, this looks good, and nothing was on your list that you get when you're hungry. It's completely up to you if you decide you wanna do organic or not, um, but something to look at is the dirty dozen list. That way you can save some money on some non-organic things that are not so heavily sprayed and full of pesticides. And then the things that you uh, do wanna buy organic, if you choose to do that, then you can decide what it is that's important to you to buy organic. Look for the least processed items that you can find, so sticking to whole foods. So brown rice over white rice, for example. Try to find things that have a really long shelf life, like potatoes. Potatoes can be made into so many different meals, and when you can get a really big bulk bag of them, they will last you the entire month, really. That's huge. Yeah. 
So this is how many pounds? This is uh, okay, let me six seventy nine. For 15 pounds, it's 45 cents per pound. Yeah, that's great. Buy a lot of canned goods. So I like to buy diced tomatoes and tomato paste. With that, I can make things like salsa or a ton of Italian dishes, soups, so many different things. Look into getting some dried beans because those are really cost effective. You can get a large amount of dried beans like pinto beans or black beans or lentils or split peas. Um, for quite a good price and you will have multiple meals from that one bag. Um, another thing you want to do or maybe if you don't feel like dealing with dried beans is getting canned beans so you can get chickpeas and uh, black beans and pinto beans and kidney beans, so many types of beans. Also look for frozen fruits and vegetables that you can add into any dish. You can make into a smoothie, you can put them in soups, into pastas and just things that are going to last you for a really long time. So my game plan for spending $150 on a vegan budget per month is to get like half of that budget on bulk foods that are going to have a long shelf life. And then using the other half of that money that you have left over um, on a weekly basis to buy fresh fruits and vegetables that you need and maybe any little condiments that you need. Um, it's up to you if you wanna buy like onions in bulk. If you eat a lot of onions or garlic, that might be a good choice. But if not, you can buy one or two onions and a, a head of garlic per week. Those things are really inexpensive. When it comes to vegetable broth, I find a cost-effective way, instead of buying like a box of broth, is just to buy vegetable bouillon. Um, you've seen it in a lot of my recipes. If you have my cookbook, you know that I recommend it. And it's really a great way. You just add water to those bouillon cubes and you can uh, have that last for quite some time. You might even have it last the whole month depending on what you decide to make. So let me just show you what I chose to buy in order to make this whole thing happen. So when I went to go and buy these things in bulk, here is what I was looking for. Onions, oats, white potato, sweet potato, beans, whether dried or canned, rice, tortillas, legumes, any kind of extra legumes, cans of tomato sauce, cans of diced tomato, tomato paste, canned beans, pasta, chia seeds, hemp seeds, black seeds, bananas, dates, and pineapple. For me, um, I know at Costco, you can really save a lot of money on the produce. The bananas are really inexpensive for organic, organic medjool dates. You can get a giant box that's easily going to last you the entire month or longer for $10. Um, a giant box of a green of your choice, so whether that be spinach or some kind of uh, mixed power greens, that will last you um, at least a week or two, depending on how fast you eat those greens. With what I purchased in bulk, I spent $63. And to be honest, a lot of this stuff will last past a month. So just getting that first month up and running, the brown rice that I have for two people, I mean, I don't eat rice every single day, but um, for two people normally lasts us about six months, which is absolutely insane and such a money saver. With chickpeas or black beans, I can go through a can or two every single week, which means buying one like uh, group of those cans together will last me the entire month, which is great. So I bought oatmeal, brown rice, organic potatoes, bananas, a pineapple. Pineapple is a great thing, any kind of large fruit that you can store for later, so pineapple or a watermelon. Watermelons are often expensive, but pineapple has a really thick skin, so I don't mind buying it non-organic, and I can use it to eat it whole. I can make smoothies, I can make juices. It's really a fruit that will last a really long time. Organic gala apples, I bought lentils, eight cans of black beans, an eight pack of diced tomatoes, a 12 pack of tomato paste, a six pack of organic pasta, and this organic pasta will last way longer than a month if you're not eating it every single day. I chose to buy chia seeds only because I feel like they provide a good amount of fat, healthy fat, and they also are one of the least expensive things um, as far as nuts and seeds go. So that was my total at the bulk store and I spent $63, which is really great. That means I'm set up for quite a long time, whether it be a month or even a little bit longer, with lots of shelf stable foods that are healthy for me. And then for example, if I have $20 to spend on produce during the week, I'm going to look for sales. I'm going to look for any kind of way to save some money. I'm going to look for like those $2 bags at natural grocers. I'm going to talk to my grocery man and I'm going to buy some greens. So maybe a bunch of kale or dandelion greens so I can juice those. I'm going to focus on getting things that are um, going to last. So a small box of berries or strawberries is not extremely cost effective. So I'll steer away from those unless I happen to have 
extra money. If I wanted to buy olive oil or earth balance or any kind of just extra condiment that I know I won't go through in the entire week, but I'll probably go through in a month or two, then I will put that in my weekly budget as well. It all comes down to just planning. This is totally doable. You just can't be um, wishy-washy about it or lazy about it. Um, you just have to be willing to have simple meals and all of these really simple meals that you can make from these kinds of food are going to be extremely nourishing to your body. And plus side, you're probably going to lose weight because you're not going out, you're not using extra fancy things and you're just eating simply and um, having whole foods. And so I think that this is actually a great way to not only save money, but a great way to lose some weight too. So those are my tips for staying on a $150 budget on a vegan diet. I think that this is really good. I, I'm really happy with this video and I really feel like researching this has made me realize I don't need to spend as much on groceries as I do. I love to cook, I love to make new recipes, so I feel like the thing that I spend the most money on is food, um, but I don't feel bad about it because that's what I really enjoy doing. However, I feel like putting some of these tips to use in my own life, I'm going to be able to save some more money on groceries and who doesn't love saving? I do. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, please go ahead and hit the like button if you like this video. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Let's talk down below. Let me know some of your money saving tips to be able to uh, thrive on a vegan lifestyle and still keep money in your wallet. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.